You're watching S Star TV, you don't know. Do you miss Pirate Radio at all? Um <coughs> Do you know what? I spent like two and a bit years on Pirate Radio. I spent five years on, on KISS. So I spent much longer on legal radio than I was even on Pirate, which is strange, you know, that's not the norm. But I miss I miss aspects of it because Pirate Radio was proper like you could do anything you want. Yeah, it was spontaneous. People used to turn up, and it was like a mad set or whatever. But I think legal radio is very, is, is good, man. I, I, it's a lot more organised. I can schedule stuff, you know, in. I can make it. I can make the scene look more professional, um, you know. So, and at the end of the day, I can still do sets, you know, like mm. as proved by these specials and that. So, hopefully, I'll be able to do some other stuff as well. But. I, I don't personally miss pirate radio. If there was no pirate radio, I'd miss it because that means there wouldn't be anyone else. But you know, when I've left pirate radio, other people have stepped in, and you know, they're they're doing their thing now on pirate. Mm. So you know, you know, I, I I don't think I'm missed on pirate radio because other people out there just doing the same graft that I used to be doing. You know, so I'm happy where I am, and I'm happy that other people are coming through on pirate radio at the moment. Mm. Um, I know it's a long shot. But can you ever see two gram slots, slots on um, Kiss? <laughs> two gram slots on Kiss? Yeah. Um, not not in like the immediate future, to be honest with you. Grime as a sound is so. Grime as a sound is very unique. Like it's very niche. Like it's got a very different sound. So unless grime became the sound that was banging in the mainstream, like proper grime became the the sound of the mainstream, then they might get a few people playing it. But you know, I'm amazed there aren't more than one legal grime show on legal radio on other stations because, mm. you know, I expected when I got a show on Kiss that Cool Choice would then get a show and yeah. maybe Radio One would get a show. Even One Extra would get a dedicated grime show, and that's not that's not happened. So mm. I'm I'm a bit surprised by that. So that has to happen first before Kiss get. I mean, imagine if Kiss had two grime shows and there was no other grime show anywhere else. That'd be mad. Yeah. So I'm I'm waiting to see, you know, one of you guys off Pirate get on another station so that. <coughs> There's even more people playing grime on the mainstream because at the moment, you know, that's what we need. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of stuff missing, but what do you think's the main things missing from grime at the moment? <coughs> events and releases. Mm. You know, um, without events, without people being able to go out and hear the music in a club, it's not going to be the thing to listen to. You know, people like hype and excitement, and yeah, you can have clashes and wars, and everyone's excited about get some p money, but when that's finished. What have you got after that? Like, I want to see live events because live events is just ongoing natural energy and excitement anyway. Yeah. So you really need to have more live events because this music's built for being live. It's not sit back and listen to it. You know, the more you turn music into just sitting at home, listen to it on on your laptop or on your iPod or whatever, it becomes <coughs> it just becomes like more laid back and complicated and technical, and you lose that. You lose that exciting raw element to it, and I think, you know, while it's great that all these great lyricists are coming through, I want to see more channels for the exciting MCs to come and perform as well, because I think that's sort of become like a little bit of a a lost art form, being able to to, to smash up smash up a rave. Um, so you know, that's that's something like the live elements, and I think people should just be able to buy more music. You know, people need to be putting stuff out every month on iTunes for people to buy. You know, wicked that people are getting mixtapes out. But you know you need to be getting uh, producers need to be getting instrumentals out digitally. You know guys need to be doing their mixtapes on iTunes as well, doing single releases. If you've got a video, re-release your seed, the, the tune as a single with remixes and instrumental as a single. Man, it's not gonna it's not gonna kill you. After, you know, and then you get you know you can people. I see people complaining that guys don't pay for grime or don't buy grime. Not enough of it is put out. You know people aren't in the habit of buying it because you're not mm. putting out enough. And I think if people put out more stuff. <coughs> You know, then people would be more in the habit of paying for it. That's it. Um, I know it doesn't uh, happen much, but how come Sidewinder? You don't really play there. It's a story um, behind that. I played. I think I've only played at three Sidewinders, and they just didn't really book me. They never really. They never. They didn't book me, and I was on rinse. I sent. Um, I did a. I did a very well-known um, mixtape that I wanted to give away for free to give to Sidewinder to promote myself and my show in one of their tape packs. I think it was the 2000 and, it was either 2004, 2005, I think yeah, it was 2005. 
um, awards tape pack. And I mm. did a bonus disc. I said, you know, here you go. I sent it off to them, gave it to them. They didn't, for whatever reason, they never put it in the tape pack. Um, someone at Kiss heard that CD, gave me a demo show. So, like, in the end, it worked yeah, out exactly. good for me. You know, they heard that CD that was going to go in the tape pack because I just did it myself. I gave it out of record shops. Mm. Um, <clears throat> when I got on Kiss, they gave me a couple. I mean, they literally booked me for. I remember I did my first one and I played a vocal set and I remember that because I cut whatever my booking fee was, I cut. I spent all of that at the cutting house cutting tunes, especially mm. for it, because it was like my first side. I wanted to have loads yeah. of wicked songs. So I made load of load of a cappella stuff with over big instrumentals, like bait tunes and I went there and did a full vocal set and it was wicked, it went down really well. Mm. Another big set I did was with um, <coughs> Wiley and Boy Better Know Meridian. And you know, there was a nasty jack clash on stage. That was at Cambridge at the junction. That went down really well. You know, they had a clash, no one fought, there was no incidents. So I thought I handled that well as a DJ. And yeah, they never really they never booked me after that. So I don't know, you'd have to ask them why they never really booked mm. me. But you know, it's a shame. Uh, I'd have loved to have I'd have loved to have played in just more 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 live events in general because I love playing grime music to a crowd that knows about grime, so that's a joy for me. Yeah, that is the on to the next question is that why don't we see Logan at enough raves? Do you think it's because you're just pure grime? <coughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, um, I think grime DJs in general aren't respected very much. Um, mm. You know, there's, there's this idea in people's heads that grime is some violent music and if you play it for too long, everyone's going to turn into a zombie and start killing each other. Mm. But these promoters will pay guys a thousand pound, fifteen hundred pound, even two thousand pound to come down and perform and spit grime PAs at their club, mm. you know, for 10 minutes. They'll pay them huge amounts of money, but you won't pay the DJs even like 200 pound to do a grime set. Like you'd rather they play, you know, the same funky that the guy before them played or R&B mm. or whatever. Or, you know, I mean, I get people asking me like, oh yeah, I know you're a grime DJ and you do a grime show, but would you mind playing like some garage or some funky or something in your set? And I was like, you know what, if, if, if you really feel like I can't even play a 45 minute set of just grime, I'm probably not right for your venue, I'm not, probably so, not right for your club because I'm a grime DJ and I know loads of DJs that have changed what they do, they bandwagon from one scene to the next and whatever and they're now playing more this, more that, more other mm -hmm. and they get loads more bookings than me. But for me, I'm not in this to you know get a couple hundred pounds every week, I'm in this because I love grime music and so, I don't mind if I don't get bookings playing bare other types of music, I, I want to play grime so I want to play like that. Mm. Um, Devlin just got signed. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's much other pe much other artists out there right now that are ready f ready for that themselves? Boy, you know what? Like Devlin's a pretty Devlin's pretty raw underground guy. The stuff yeah. that he spits about is pretty, you know, it's real gritty stuff. You know, mm. he's not spitting no schmaltzy pop stuff. Like he's talking some like London City, some real shit. So, you know, I don't see any reason why anyone's got some sort of profile in the scene can't get signed. You know, I don't see. The only, the only thing that's holding these guys back from getting signed is the labels don't know what to do with them. I mean, mm. I'm amazed it took so long for Tiny Temper to get signed. Because I thought, you know, he when everyone was getting signed and originally, he already had Wifey Rhythm, he already had um, Hood Economics, he already had the other tune with um, Flukes. You know, he had a, a couple of good tunes. He did Tears, which is one of the, the most mainstream friendly, proper grime records yeah. that I can think of. You know, and, and it took him ages to get signed. And I, f and I heard a rumour that someone at the label wasn't even really sure about Pass Out being pushed as a big single. They thought it was just going to be like an underground club tune. And look how massive that is. So I think one of the reasons why a lot of these people aren't signed yet is because really the labels don't know what to do with them. Not because they're not good enough or they're not ready or they haven't got fans. It's just, you know, the labels will sign you when they have an idea of how to sell you. I'm assuming Devlin, they looked at him and thought, right, you know what? We've come up with a strategy to market him. Now we're ready to sign him. Yeah. I think that's probably what happened because you know Devlin's been hugely fucking talented for like four years. Definitely. There's guys out there that are as talented as Devlin that ain't been signed yet. There's guys out there that have got bigger fan bases than Devlin that ain't mm. been signed yet. But obviously with Devlin, I'm glad that he's been signed. He's a huge talent and hopefully he does well. But I mean, you know, people shouldn't really take it personally whether they ain't been signed and someone else has. It just means someone else at a record label had an idea of how to flog them and they ain't thought of one for you yet. You know, so just keep doing what you